We all know that 404 not found errors can present a problem on your website, but how do you find all the 404 errors that could be affecting your users, could be affecting your SEO performance? That's what we're going to talk through in this video today. Let's begin by looking at what an error tool should do. What are the main considerations we should have? Well, the first thing is that an error tool needs to find errors from all different sources. Right? People can find errors in lots of different ways. They can click on links on your website, they can click on links on other websites, they can click on broken links in emails or in social shares, or they can have something in their favorites that goes to a 404 error because maybe the favorite was really old. They can also directly type in a URL and that leads them to a 404 as well. And what you want is an error tool that can find 404s from all of these different sources. Second, we want an error tool that can give us an idea of what's the real impact of these 404 errors. Yes, obviously we know that 404 errors are a problem, but it'd be nice to prove that out. Is that 404 error affecting hundreds of people on our website? Is it affecting thousands of people on our website? Is it costing us sales? Is it costing us conversions? Is it costing us rankings? Ultimately, the question is, does that 404 error matter? Is it affecting people? Is it affecting your business? The more it's affecting people, the more it's affecting your business, well, then the more important it is to go in and actually fix that 404 error. The next thing that we want to think about and the next thing that we want from an error monitoring tool is we want continual monitoring. 404 errors can happen at any time and an error tool needs to be on constant alert to tell us about the different errors that are happening on our website no matter when they happen. All right, now that we've talked through some of the things that we need to keep in mind and the consideration points we have for these different tools. Let's talk about the different types of error monitoring tools that are out there. There's really four different kinds of error monitoring tools, the first of which is crawlers. Crawlers check every link on your website to see if it's broken. And I want to emphasize here that these focus on your website, right? You launch a crawler on your website and the crawler goes through and looks at all the pages, all the links, everything that's on your website to see if any of those links or any of those pages are broken. Next, we have web analytics tools. Web analytics tools track visits to 404 page by visitors. Web analytics tools obviously track a lot of other things besides people actually just reaching an error page on your website. You can use web analytics tools for lots of different things. But one of those things that you can use web analytics tool for is if people are reaching an error. Similar to a web analytics tool, we have web logs. Web logs track visits to a 404 error page by visitors and bots. Web analytics tools typically only look at people reaching 404 errors or reaching your website who are actual humans and try to filter out bots. Next, we have external link tools. External link tools find broken links from external websites. So external link tools will go through and they'll crawl all different kinds of pages. They'll look at everything that's linking to your website and will assess if any of those links happen to be leading to a 404 error page, if any of those links are broken. Lastly, we have Google Search Console. Google Search Console will report on any 404 errors that their bots found while they were crawling through the web and while they were crawling through your website. Let's talk through each of these in turn, starting with crawlers or crawl tools. So a crawl tool checks every link on your website and will determine whether that link leads to a 404 not found error. The biggest drawback to this is that it only checks links contained on your website. And that's a problem because 404 errors can happen in lots of different ways, right? There's lots of different sources that can lead to a 404 error. A crawl tool also doesn't really give you an idea of priority or importance. Sure, it found a broken link, but is that broken link really costing you a lot of conversions? Is it costing you a lot of traffic? Is that broken link really holding back something in your SEO performance? crawl tool won't tell you that. All of that said, crawl tools are very useful. You want to make sure that your website is as healthy as possible, is as error-free as possible, and a crawl tool is your best way to do that and to understand that. So you want to use a crawl tool, and I would recommend you crawl your website regularly, particularly if you have a really active website or you have a really big website. Just know that you can't only rely on the crawl tool to find the 404 errors on your website. Web analytics tools and log files share a lot of similarities between the two of them, so let's talk about these two together. Both offer methods for how to track how many people or how many robots reached a 404 error. And because they give you an idea of how many people reached a 404 error, how many bots reached a 404 error, you can start to get a sense of priority, a sense of importance. 
The biggest downside to relying on web analytics tools and web log files is that it won't proactively find the errors. It will only tell you about the error once it's a problem, once a person or once a robot has actually reached that error. In contrast, right, crawl tools at least have some hope of being proactive. Maybe you crawl your website, you find those uh, broken links and find those 404 error pages before people do, before robots do. But in the case of web analytics tools or web log files, you're only finding things after people have already reached that page after people visited. The hope here is that you find them quickly enough before too many more people visit or too many more robots hit that page. Web analytics tools and web log files are a bit harder to use. They require a bit more configuration to set up. Certainly something like web log files can be a little tedious and cumbersome to process through. So this isn't as simple as just launching a crawl of your website. My recommendation here is that Web analytics tools and web log files are definitely worth using, especially for more active websites. You want to know the impact that the 404 errors are having. Yes, you can launch a crawl and you can find those 404 errors. Yes, you can launch a crawl and find all the broken links. But you need to know the priority, especially if those 404 errors are going to require extensive development time to go in and fix. You're going to need to justify that time being spent there fixing those errors relative to all the other projects that you have going on. Next, let's talk about external link checkers and broken backlinks. The idea behind external link tools is want to know if any of those external links are linking to a 404 error page on our website. If an external link is linking to your website, that's called a backlink. If an external link is linking to a 404 error page on your website, that's called a broken backlink. So what we're trying to identify here are broken backlinks. And one of the biggest problems with broken backlinks is they can weaken your backlink profile and that can hurt your SEO. But of course, this can hurt user experience as well, right? If people find a reference to your website in a directory or in a news article and they click to your website and they land on a 404, that's not very good. That's not something we want people to do. We don't want people to reach a 404 error on our website. So we want to find these broken backlinks to improve that user experience and prevent that from happening. My recommendation is you want to use this following any kind of major website update. In some cases, that's going to be a redesign or redevelopment where you've recently changed a whole bunch of pages, possibly changed a whole bunch of URLs, increasing your chances of breaking some of those backlinks. But on other websites, especially really active websites, you're basically doing a major update of your website every month or every quarter as you're adding a whole bunch of new pages, removing a whole bunch of old pages, and that too is going to put you in a situation where you might be breaking some of those backlinks. So you want to check this maybe on a more regular basis if you are a more active website. Finally, let's talk about Google Search Console and how we can use this to find the 404s that exist on our website. The first and biggest thing to note is that Google Search Console reports on the 404 not found errors that Googlebot found while crawling through your website or while they've been crawling through the web and if they found any of those broken backlinks that are referencing 404s on your website. To find this, you can go under the coverage reports, go to excluded, and then look down for any not found errors. In this case, we have eight not found errors that Googlebot found. Now, the biggest problem here is that this isn't proactive. You are only finding out about those 404 errors after Google found out about those 404 errors, after Google has factored in those 404 errors to their evaluation of your website's pages. The other problem here is that this doesn't report on every source. Yes, Google can find a lot of things. Yes, Google can crawl the web and they'll find more than those external link tools, possibly even find more than the crawl tool that you used on your own website in finding those broken links. However, even Google can't find all the broken links that can lead to your website from emails, from social networks, from offline marketing, or other sources, or people directly typing in a bad URL on your website. Google can't find all of those, and so you can't rely on Google Search Console as a complete list of all the not found errors that exist on your website. My recommendation is that you definitely want to use Google Search Console, and you want to use Google Search Console for a lot more than just checking for 404 errors. However, as you're looking at Google Search Console, and as you're checking on it, what you want to pay particular attention to is any surges in error activity. If all of a sudden you have a massive uptick in how many errors Google is finding, that's a problem and you need to know why that's happening. Ideally though, you're going to find out about those errors before Google does. And even more ideally, you can fix those errors before Google even goes and finds them. So hopefully Google Search Console doesn't report on any errors. If you're doing your job right, finding all those errors in the crawl tools, in the external link tools, in your web logs, in your analytics files. 
If you have any questions about finding 404 errors or fixing 404 errors or anything else going on with the technical side of your website, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it educational, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe for more videos from Elementive. Thanks for watching.